Uh, just a quick once over on a compression test. Um, this is a 351 Cleveland out of an old Ford. Um, so disconnect fuel line there um, and block off the fuel line coming the other way just in case fuel cups pumping through. Um, you can use a hose or if you've got enough room you can clamp that. Um, disconnect the coil. Make sure you know what wires go where. Um, you can go silly when I disconnected the plugs because I've got to pull this engine out. I'll label all the plugs just to make sure I get the dizzy and all that right, but uh, you don't have to do that. As long as you know where the plugs go, uh, the plug lead goes. Um, pull all the plugs out. <sighs> Pretty straightforward. I find on the Cleveland easiest way to do these. Um, it's just a simple tube spanner with a screwdriver poking through. There's just no room for decent stuff. These are easy, fit between the, the uh, shock towers and everything. Very simple, screwdriver and whack and undo them. Um, compression tester, this is just a normal C-Chrome one off eBay. You can get them anywhere, they're cheap. Uh, what I do is just put, this is the smaller one. You'll see there's two sizes, 18 and 14, but 14s are on these ones. Uh, this is how they come when you buy them, literally. This. Um, so I just chucked a little bit of grease on the rubber there. And then basically, screw it in uh, they're a little bit tight it's not tight but awkward because of the angle so you just have two hands one hand turning the gauge the other hand turning this thing and you eventually find the the spot where it needs to go um, all i did to make it easier instead of because i was on my own i just did connect the the um, power wire to the solenoid on the starter motor this is just a pull off cable pull off um, lug so very simple Disconnected that and I just run it straight to the battery that way I can crank it make sure it's in neutral and all that other crazy stuff good stuff um, Or park whatever depending on all our manual So yeah, then once you once your gauge is connected just just hit that on there um, Crank it over give it three four five cranks, but you'll see the gauge will just go up and go dink 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 and it'll just hit the same spot when you crank it so once it's hit a spot after three or four cranks um yeah that's enough you'll know whether she's a good engine or not um yeah so just do that with all eight um make sure you've got a healthy battery because it does take a bit of draw out of the battery i found i've even got a relatively new battery and it still nearly killed it at the end um obviously there's no charge going into it so have a it's just an idea to have a fresh battery or charge it up properly um, other than that that's about it yeah so record your record your numbers based on what engine what type of cylinder you're on make sure you know which ones are good which ones are not so good uh, just in case you have to do a wet test which is heaps of stuff on YouTube about um, but yeah oh lucky this one's good she was 175 was the lowest and 185 was the highest which is obviously um, you can see the PSI reading on there. That's PSI I'm talking about here. Um, yeah, so she's a healthy engine. She's she's good to come out and get smashed into a, another car. There you go. I hope that helps. And obviously put it all back together. Otherwise you get stuff down in your plug holes. So put all the plugs back in when you're done. Um, and you know make sure things have got covers on and don't let anything fall in there while you're doing the job. All right. Okay, cool.